Okay, you should be recording. So what I'm going to show today is just an update on Ozzy's trot work on the long reins. So I've been able to get a little bit of a smaller circle. Um, I'm not having to walk with him to keep him going, but I did pick up a riding whip, um, which he respects from a distance and I've been able to start to make the circle more accurate but I have to keep it pretty big. So what I'm going to show today is just 10 minutes walk trot on the long reins. How he's doing with that it's still a work in progress but I'm happy to be able to at least have a more accurate circle that shows an improvement to his balance and okay we'll do 10 minutes to the right and then 10 minutes to the left hopefully he doesn't run over the key try so he's starting off with a lot more control he was uh rushing so like the week i had planned to trot him we had all that rain and slick footing, so I couldn't. So since the last video, I've been asking him to trot quite a bit, doing 20 minutes each way of walk trot on the long reins, and then riding him for 20 minutes after. So I will videotape his, where he's at with his riding tomorrow. But today, I figured instead of tacking him up, I would do a session of trot and just show you sort of how that's going. I'm pretty pleased. He's still rushing a little bit, but he's starting to lengthen the neck. He's not um, panicking going into the trot, which was off and on. I would say some days more than others. Some days he was pretty chill. Other days he was really rushing and excited. So you can see at least on this bigger circle, He's offering to hold the trot quite a bit longer, and I'm just giving him this support with the long reins while he works it out. So I'm still allowing the break to the walk, which always helps a horse calm down and rebalance. Let him walk a little bit, and then back to trot. And we have to go around the kitty cat. Mercury thinks he owns the place. And he just takes for granted the horses won't step on him. So I might try to pull Ozzy over towards this side of the kitty kitty. Oh, I hope we're still being followed by the camera. I think so. I know. Good boy. Let's see if the camera is, yes, okay, the camera is still following him. So little by little, he's starting to find his rhythm. He's starting to be a little more relaxed, a little more supple in the trot. He's still kind of heavy on my hands, which is also true when I'm riding him. So some days I still like to work him in the halter because he doesn't have as much of a tendency to overcurl the neck and get behind. So I thought today we would have a walk trot session on the long reins. Tomorrow I'll do a little warm up on the long reins, not sure if it'll be walk or trot, and then videotape how he's doing under saddle. And not a whole lot has changed under saddle yet. Um, and part of the reason I've been trotting him on the ground longer than I've been riding is because it seems at the 30 maximum 40 minute mark under saddle he just starts to get a little bit defensive which typically tells me he's getting tired and even though he's a big strong horse with these changes in balance you're always working the weakest part of the body. So I think Ozzy is going to be a 
fabulous mover. I think there's a lot of talent in there that as he gets his balance, he just keeps offering more suspension. And as he gets more control in the trot, he just gets a better rhythm that looks like pure pleasure to ride. So again, I'm letting him break. I want him to stay calm. I want him to rebalance. And then back up to trot. So instead of having to walk with him, he's respecting the riding whip. And he's been offering to trot for longer and longer periods. And just gently playing with the speed of the trot, how he's using his neck. And every once in a while, finally gets lighter on my hands. So just the fact that I can stand still and make a more accurate circle, even though it's still bigger than I would like for his engagement. We've made great headway this week with the trot work. So we'll do a few more minutes this way. And then I'll show you 10 minutes on the other direction. I kind of reversed um, in my training sessions. Instead of doing the easy side first, which is going to the left, we're doing our warm up on the harder side, which is going to the right. And after a day or two, he adjusted to that and really made better changes by sort of starting on the harder direction and then working on the easier direction. So I'm glad he's ready for that. And just like the riding, when he falls into the long and low, he speeds up a bit or he breaks the trot. So it's just showing he doesn't have a lot of control and stability through the back and hind quarter. So I don't mind the long and low right now. It's opposite of how he's been jumping a little hollow and disengaged. And when he's more consistent in the long and low and a little more consistent in his rhythm, I'll start to tighten up the circle to get more engagement. So I don't really need to fix the long and low. I just need to keep giving him support whether his head is high or low. About three more minutes. But I'm pretty pleased with how he is finding a better rhythm at trot. I like how he's exploring. I like that he's ca getting calmer and more stable in his energy, even with the faster speed. And the leg wrapping, I think, has helped. Um, I haven't had as much fluid on the hocks. It's more preventative at this point than it is necessary. But it does seem to help him stabilize a bit more with the hind legs wrapped. Trot. A little bit more. So the trot work, right now it's most of the hour when I work him. Like I said, I've been trotting him 20 minutes each way and then riding for 20 minutes. And as he gets stronger, as he gets more stable, 
then I'll start reducing the trot work time on the long reins and increasing the riding time. But a 20 minute ride, I'm getting everything done I want to do, do and like I said, not much is gonna change under saddle until that back and hindquarters starts to build up more stability and more strength. So I figured focusing on the trot work on the long reins may speed up that process. So I'll let him walk for just a minute. Then we'll reverse directions and I'll show you 10 minutes of the trot work the other But I feel like I'm starting to see some muscle developing on the hindquarter. It looks less angular, less sunken in, looking a little bit more round, which means all the right muscles are developing and all of the wrong tension and tightness is starting to restore to suppleness. Okay, so we'll change direction and do about 10 minutes the other way. And as you can see, even down here where the runoff was, it's getting much drier. So the footing and the weather has been perfect to work on trot quite a bit this past week and probably next week. So again, I'm gonna kind of try let him out to as big a circle as possible with me standing still. And he's been able to go into trot, hold the trot longer. On the bigger circle. But at least getting the accuracy of the circle, which is related to the internal straightness, even on a big circle, as that gets better, that's a huge part of stabilizing the back and the hindquarter. That kitty cat likes to live dangerously. Trot. And the more transitions, the better. So I don't mind the transitions, but it was a little more efficient for me to grab the riding whip instead of having to go out there towards him to get him moving in the trot. Trot. And just that sound seems to really motivate him to get going. And the riding whip is a lot easier to handle when you've got the long reins. The lunge whip is just almost too big and too cumbersome. So I'm happy that if I make a whippy sound with the whip, that seems to motivate him back in the trot. But he's pretty good just following a cluck and a trot voice command. And I think he's starting to enjoy the trot. I think he's starting to get some relief working in the trot. It usually relaxes the back muscles. Uh, the back muscles work a lot less in trot than they do in walk. So it's kind of a nice way to release the tightness through his back and build up a little more strength of the hindquarters. So again, if he gets more consistent long and low on this size circle then I will start to tighten up the circle little by little asking for more engagement more balance but not today I'm just happy if he's choosing long and low on a more precise circle for today
but you can see he's almost figured out how to lengthen the neck into the upward and the downward transitions which is showing some more control through the back and hindquarter. So instead of shortening his neck and dropping his back in order to get between walk and trot, he's starting to figure out how to use his back and hind legs. Like that was quite good. He kept the neck long during the downward transition, but you can see his hind legs aren't always so reliable. And he takes a little misstep here and there. Very good. <laughs> and these little quick transitions are fantastic for building up the strength of the hindquarter. So I don't care if he maintains the trot. I don't care if he makes hundreds of little transitions. Either way, I'm just helping him stay level while he works out his trot. You can see this direction, not as much suspension. He's a little heavier on the forehand. And this was the leg where we x-rayed the stifle because the stifle had a little bit of looseness. And that might be that he isn't quite as handy with using his hindquarter this direction. And it looks like that leg wrap is slipping a little bit too. That's not helpful. But I think we can get in our last few minutes. Yeah, that vel Velcro on that left leg wrap was a little sketchy. And trot. And the kitty cat almost gets taken out by the ropes. So I'll just let him walk a second. We have about three more minutes to go. And then what I'll do to finish up today's session is <coughs> I'll end up doing 30 minutes each way, but I'll probably give him a break at the walk and then do a little bit more trot and then end with some more walk. So the trot we do on this larger circle and when I'm going to let him walk for five or ten minutes then I go back to the really small circle at the walk trot because he's pretty comfortable maintaining the much smaller circle at the walk. He just have, was having a very hard time at the trot. So this size circle seems to work for him for now. Good boy. Got about two more minutes and trot. Good, and trot. Pretty sensitive guy. Doesn't take much to get him going forward, which is why when I tried trotting on the smaller circles, I quickly gave it up because he's not a horse that doesn't like to go forward. So that was telling me the small circles at trot were just in the category of too hard for now, and we'll work our way back towards it. 
and I've still been putting, you can see there's a little residual clay on his hocks. I've still been putting the clay on his hocks every night and just letting him have it on overnight, um, which again has been preventative, not really necessary, but I think it's helping. Okay, one last one. Chuck? Good boy. So then, once I'm going to give him a bit of time at walk, what I'm going to do is just make the circle smaller. And I go right down to sort of the black part, which I think is roughly a 12 foot radius. So roughly a 24 foot circle. And then I'm just going to let him catch his breath and those nice soft muscles now from all that trot can reorganize into a little bit better walk. So that's all I wanted to show you today. I'm gonna stop the video there and then I will videotape a ride with him tomorrow. It's not super exciting yet, but I wanted to give you an update to his progress and hopefully he's looking better too on the video. Thanks.